forecast first from KARK4. A few more clouds around today, but a pretty nice afternoon, and that has transitioned into a pretty nice evening. In fact, a little bit warmer than average for this time of year. We're looking at temperatures this hour holding in the 60s and 70s, still in the 80s across portions of the southern part of the United States. But cold air is now pouring southward from Canada. It's down into the teens in western Montana, and I know you're saying it gets cold in Montana, but normally not that cold this early in the season. That colder air is now making its way south. Denver had a high in the low to mid 80s today. They're down to 37. That cold air is headed for us. We'll let you know when it gets here. Your forecast first for Little Rock, looking for a partly cloudy to mostly sunny day for your Thursday. It's going to be unseasonably warm, a touch on the humid side. We're going to top it out in the mid to upper 80s. KARK 4 News at 10 starts right now. Now, from the station you count on for local news that matters, this is KARK 4 News at 10. Breaking news this evening, we're learning a Little Rock City director was placed into police custody for a citation this evening. Thanks for joining us at 10 on Bob Clausen. And I'm Ashley Katz. Ken Richardson is the city director for Ward 2. And KRK4's Rochelle Turner has been on top of this story tonight. Rochelle, you just talked with him a few moments ago. What did he have to say? That's exactly right, Bob and Ashley. Richardson says the whole situation has left him feeling insulted. He told me he was leaving an event in Little Rock this afternoon, and he stopped at to get some gas at the Kroger on Colonel Glen Road. That's when he says he noticed a young man being arrested by Little Rock police and he wanted to see what was going on. Now Richardson says he heard complaints from the community about the police department's interaction in minority communities. Richardson says the officer told him to move along and Richardson told officers he was going to watch. Richardson says he had already had a meeting scheduled with LRPD Chief Keith Humphrey on Thursday and told the officer he was going to call the chief. Before he knew it, he was in the back of a police car. Yeah, I'm not, I wasn't sagging. I wasn't, I wasn't, uh, didn't have any weapons. I didn't appear to be threatening. I wasn't violent. I wasn't uh, cursing. I was just telling him why I was there. And he felt the need to put me in handcuffs and sit me in a car for about 30 minutes, which was, uh, you know, it angered me, but it, it insulted me and offended, it offended me more than anything else because my constituents saw it. And a lot of them were concerned about my safety and my well being. And after I was in the car for about 10 minutes, I look up and there's about six other cars pulled up. Richardson says it's troubling that a lot of police officers don't know who their elected officials are and says this is something that needs to be addressed. Now, I also spoke to Little Rock Police tonight who told me they will be reviewing the incident with staff and administration. We'll be sure to keep you updated. Back to you. All right, Rochelle, thanks very much. Elsewhere tonight, LRSD, the flagship school district in the state, has several failing schools. The State Board of Education releasing school report cards today, and a lot of eyes were on them. Many of the findings show positive gains. Hundreds of schools tested better than last year. Plus, graduation rates continue to trend upward. But for LRSD, eight schools received failing marks. The Little Rock superintendent says he hopes those letter grades get parents and community leaders motivated, get involved with those schools. He also says that he looks at growth scores overall. That's how well students did from the time they walked into the classroom on the first day of school to when they left on the last day of class. If a parent does see a DRF, I hope what they do is they say, we need to even invest more in our child in the school. He is one of five school districts under state control for either academic or fiscal distress, the others being Dollarway, Pine Bluff, Lee County, as well as Earl. For comparison's sake, the largest school district in the state, Springdale, didn't have a single failing school. Likewise, the Pulaski County Special School District no F's there either. North Little Rock had one failing school, 7th Street Elementary. Jacksonville, North Pulaski had two flunking schools. If you'd like to see how your child's school came out, you can take a closer look at the entire list. You can go to our website, krk.com. We've got the full breakdown for you right there. And however, others are saying that labeling schools is not the best way to grade. One of the loudest voices against the grading is the Arkansas Legislative Black Caucus, spearheaded by State Senator Joyce Elliott. Elliott's district covers the Little Rock School District. She said in a news conference today, the practice of labeling schools promotes racial inequity and creates a racial divide. She says schools under state control are predominantly African American, and she believes the proposed framework has a racist effect. You may punish Little Rock by closing schools. You may punish Little Rock by taking over the district. But five, ten years from now, what is going to be different if we are not looking at the source from which all of the problems come? 
Senator Elliott says during the next legislative session in all of the different committees, they need to work toward sources of the issues like she mentioned for education in Arkansas. The recent school report cards and the proposal from the State Board of Education is concerning a lot of community members tonight. Even prompting events this week, a candlelight vigil was held at Central High School tonight. The goal to unite and stand as one. Our Haley Brooks joins us live with more on this event and the message. Haley. Thousands of people showed up tonight saying they're concerned, worried, and willing to fight for the future of this district. Now, some told me it's no coincidence that the meeting happened at the Little Rock Central High School. The candlelight vigil at Central High School bringing a flicker of history to the present. And he shut down the schools to keep the schools from being integrated. And so this is so, so relevant right now because we've come a long ways. But this is a, a stark reminder that we haven't come far enough. The recent proposal from the State Board of Education wanting to keep control of LRSD schools with an F rating is being viewed by community members as segregation, since the schools rating F are prominently minority schools. They've proven that they didn't change anything. It's like it got worse. I want the, the governor to say that they're not going to separate our schools based on anything. Dale says these schools are more than just a letter. And I think we've come way too far in our society and we're, we're, we um, have made so much progress in being inclusive and, and diverse. And I feel like this is all, this, we're, we're being set back. And um, so I'm very worried, very concerned. Others say this vigil represents lighting the way for our future of one LRSD. Represent hopes for me, hopes for a change for me and everybody else in the school. We're a unified one Little Rock School District and we, sh we are now and we should always be. The State Board of Education meeting is tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And as always, we will keep you updated. Reporting live in Little Rock, I'm Haley Brooks. Back to you. Haley, thanks very much. A man practicing law in Utah and Arizona with ties to Northwest Arkansas has been indicted in an adoption scheme. Some of those charges include human smuggling, sale of child, and communications fraud. In a press conference earlier today, U.S. Attorney of the Western District of Arkansas, Dak Keyes, said Paul Peterson facing 19 felonies in the state of Arkansas. Keyes said Peterson routinely practiced law in Arkansas and submitted fraudulent documents to Arkansas courts to try to conceal what he was doing. Mr. Peterson enticed and misled several women from the Marshall Islands to illegally travel to the United States in order to give birth and then immediately give their babies up for adoption before returning home. If found guilty in all charges, Peterson could face 315 years in prison and a $5 million fine. Jefferson County authorities say a man was killed this morning after his truck was hit by a train. It happened at the crossing on 65 South and Cly Road. We're told the train wasn't traveling at 30 or was rather traveling at 37 miles an hour. The victim, Eugene Fletcher, he was the only one inside the vehicle. Deputies say heavy fog had limited visibility at the time. A central Arkansas woman enters her second week in the ICU after police, after a police car hit her head on as she waited to turn toward her son's elementary school. This happened back on September 27th outside Davis Elementary on County Line Road. 43-year-old Heather Cross suffered a broken hip, damaged arteries, and multiple strokes. A Shannon Hills police officer hit her and the chief says it appears it was the officer's fault. Now, Matt, Heather's husband, Matthew, is saying he doesn't know who will take responsibility for it. Who is going to be responsible for helping us put our life back together? Forever she will deal with this. I mean, this is unbelievable. Matthew Cross says he's still waiting for a copy of the finalized crash report. He says he hasn't heard a thing from the city or Shan of Shannon Hills or the police department. An Arkansas high school student says she felt violated after a school resource officer tried to put her in handcuffs. And there's cell phone video telling part of the story. Get off me. No, you need to get off me. Another look at that video coming up, plus what the student says led up to it and the school's response. And temperatures a few degrees warmer across much of the state today, thanks to winds turning more southerly. Here in Little Rock, 51 was the morning low, 77 the afternoon high. We're going to be about 10 degrees warmer for tomorrow and then a whole lot colder on Friday. The chilling details are coming up.
You're watching KARK4 News at 10 with Ashley Katz, Bob Clausen, Chief Meteorologist Keith Monahan, and Drew Amen with your Pig Trail Nation report. KARK4 News is sponsored by UAMS.